The following program was made possible by the generosity of those who have determined to hold fast to the true Roman Catholic religion, as expounded by the Roman Catholic Church before the disasters of Vatican II and the so-called New Mass. Hello and welcome to What Catholics Believe. I'm your host, Thomas Nagley, and with me tonight is Father William Jenkins from the Society of St. Pius V, and he's also the pastor of Immaculate Conception Church in Norwood, Ohio. Hello, Father. How are you? Fine, Tom. How are you doing there? Good, Father. Good Thanks for being you. here. Yeah, me too. You're very welcome. Do we have questions to answer today? Questions from viewers? Or? Uh, Father, I thought tonight we could comment on some of the current events that have been going on. Oh, there's, okay. there's, uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, as <coughs> usual. You know, it might not be a bad idea to point out to the viewers, though, who might mm -hmm. be tuning in looking for answers to questions, that it, it is difficult when we get questions that are veritable epistles. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do, right? We you do. do. We you do. do. Yeah. I get uh, very, very long things uh, that involve a lot of commentary, a lot of research, uh, and multiple questions, right? Yes. You might get a, an email that has 10, 12 questions in it, right? Yes, right. And that makes it very difficult for us to actually cover much. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, <clears throat> we'd like to address readers' questions, certainly, but um, <clears throat> we can't be reading um, three pages of email sure. and one, one message uh, with involving all kinds of references and then uh, asking esoteric questions that require years of research sure. either. So uh, I just recommend that if people have questions to send in that they be as brief as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, 25 words or less would certainly help. Yeah. Um, you know, I can always turn 25 words into 2,500 words very sure. easily in the answer. But yep. uh, so I appreciate. Uh, have mercy on us if you right. would. If you have questions, we'd love to answer them and give us an opportunity to. I always say the, them. the the briefer the email, the briefer the question, the more likely it is to be answered. Right. So. Well, uh, you, I give you credit. I mean, you're the one who's read read through them mm -hmm. and tried to keep up, but it's almost impossible when you're getting. Uh, novels texted mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I appreciate your efforts there and uh, ask the uh, the listeners to have mercy on you sure, and, I, and you to have mercy on me. I, I think, Father, that, uh, that the length of the emails that we receive, I think that just goes to show how necessary our program is and how starved mm -hmm. uh, souls are for some, for the truth, mm -hmm. really. I think mm -hmm. that's a real indicator of that. Right. But right. Father, let's get into some some of these uh, some of these current events that have been going on. The big thing in the news uh, has been <coughs> Francis changing the official <coughs> church position on the death penalty. You uh, addressed mm. this in your sermon somewhat on Sunday, and we have that that video posted on the channel, and we can we can link that. But <coughs> just in general, Father, do you have any other comments that you'd like to add on this uh, this whole thing? That's been well, going it's on? it's part of Francis's entire program. Uh, it, it's amazing to me that there are people who are basically what I would call novus ordo, uh, you know, novus ordo Catholics. It's, it sounds like an oxymoron <clears throat> because the novus ordo is modernism, right? Modernism in practice, and that is totally antithetical to Catholicism, right? Mm -hmm. So you have novus ordo Catholic. It's, it doesn't, doesn't compute. But in any case, there are those who are raised in the novus ordo who still have the faith, which is really a miracle, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we know this for a fact because not a week goes by that we don't see new people coming back to the traditional faith, uh, the practice of the traditional faith. And they're coming back uh, because they still have the faith. And the, the Novus Ordo has not yet extinguished the faith in them. But what is even more amazing is we have people who are not coming back to the traditional faith, they're coming to the traditional faith for the first time. And somehow in the midst of this, this Novus Ordo uh, onslaught that has gone in since Vatican II, uh, people have managed to learn the faith and to, to believe the faith and to look for the practice of the faith in the, the traditional Catholic religion. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you get young families coming to us for the first time uh, who've been basically just, as it were, wandering through the desert for years and years and uh, finally finding their way by the grace of God to the traditional Mass and the traditional sacraments and the practice of the traditional faith, the entire Catholic religion. Um, but it, it amazes me that people who are clinging to the Novus Ordo for dear life 
and clinging to Francis for dear life are, are awakening to, to find that he's actually saying things and, and doing things that are contrary to the Catholic faith. They're facing that fact. Not only are they admitting it now, but they are denouncing it. They're saying there are very grave consequences to this, what Francis is doing. And they're realizing that it's not just an idle, isolated phenomenon that Francis <clears throat> says something suspect. I mean, there are many, many people now coming out and saying outright <clears throat> that he's saying things that are contrary to the faith. For years we've had people say, uh, actually both Nova Soto and traditional Catholics, say, well, if it's not uh, ex cathedra pronouncement that he's contradicting, then it's not that bad. But you know, the extraordinary magisterium of the Church uh, is certainly uh, important, it is significant, it is uh, you know, part of the charism of infallibility that God gave the Church, these attributes of the Church, I'd say, but, but the ordinary magisterium of the Church by which the Church uh, 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 announces her faith and expounds her faith day by day, year by year, throughout the centuries. This is the ordinary magisterium of the Church. and it is, it is no less infallible than ex cathedra pronouncements. And uh, the doctrines of the faith are infallibly given to us throughout the centuries by the, by the, uh, by the Church in her life. This is guided by the Holy Ghost. So when Francis contradicts a, uh, a teaching of the ordinary magisterium of the Church, it is very serious. It is a very serious matter. And um, it actually undermines the very credibility of the Church itself. <clears throat> As a consequence, when he says that uh, the death penalty is not acceptable uh, and has it added to their modern catechism, right, of John Paul II, He's, he's contradicting the uh, perennial teaching of the Church for centuries. And what he's doing is he's undermining the credibility of the Church in all of her pronouncements. <clears throat> and now you have the LGBT uh, crowd uh, chortling that, that since Francis could change the teaching of the Church with regard to the death penalty as to whether it's sinful or not, right? whether it's moral or not, intrinsically evil or not, um, they say, well, the next step, you know, is for him with a stroke of the pen and, and a sentence added to their catechism to say that the LGBT position and uh, marriage uh, and so on uh, between, you know, deviant marriage and so on is okay, too. The, the Church has just decided that now, in our modern age, we've come to the realization that it's okay. And this is the very essence of modernism, that we make it up as we go along, depending upon, um, you know, how, how people view these things in the modern world. If it becomes acceptable uh, to people in the modern world, then it is morally fine, you know, as though, as though God has changed his mind, as though the people are God, you know, who've come to realize that what they thought was wrong before, <coughs> and what the church taught was wrong before, is uh, no longer wrong if it ever was, you know, if the church wasn't in error all that time, because now she's been enlightened by the spirit of surprises that Francis is, is uh, introducing, you know, mm -hmm. as his spirit. But it isn't the Holy Ghost, that's for sure. Sure. Uh, the Holy Ghost, our Lord was uh, telling us, was sent, would be sent by him, not to invent new doctrines, uh, but to bring to our minds all things that Christ himself had taught. So to keep us faithful to the teachings of Christ, not to be the spirit of surprises, the spirit that Francis is trying to foist upon the, uh, the Catholic people in the whole world is, is not the Holy Ghost. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a very evil thing. In fact, the former head of the Vatican Bank would indicate, uh, he didn't say this outright, but he did say what was, they're, they're purveying now through the Vatican is what he called Gnostic environmentalism, a false religion, which is, they, in their view, meant to become the world religion, the one world religion of the divine humanity at the service of the world, and, and by that meaning service of the planet, right? <laughs> so, uh, 
Um, that this seems to harmonize very well with with Francis's spirit of surprises. Mm -hmm. Father, the biggest thing I've, I've noticed in the aftermath of Francis's pronouncement is just the utter confusion <coughs> among Novus Ordo Catholics. Uh, there, there's just, you know, you can read so many articles where um, there is just not the slightest concept of what the Catholic faith is anymore, or what the role of the Pope is supposed to be. Um, but it, it seems that, that the lines are being so clearly drawn where Francis didn't, didn't just say, you know, the church has, has changed their position on this, but he also added in there that, that uh, I forget what the exact terminology was, but that we, the Catholic Church is going to work for the, uh, mm. for, for the abolishment, the abolishment of, of the death right. penalty mm. worldwide. And mm. I, I just recently was reading an article where um, it was almost a, a rallying cry for the, the bishops to get their people behind them to mm. actually physically work and actually actually do something mm -hmm. for this and so it's not just some kind of passive mm -hmm. position it's it, they're, they're mm -hmm. trying to say if you accept this if you believe this you have to actually mm -hmm. do something about it curious that the same uh, Francis who says we at the very outset we're not supposed to obsess about abortion and contraception and LGBT uh, you know mm -hmm. deviancy uh, now, now this is the big issue. This is the big thing because you know why, Tom? Because he says it offends human dignity. Yep. Human dignity. This is the cry of the very leftist for the last five hundred years. Human dignity. It was the cry of the French Revolution. It was the, it's the cry of the United Nations, right? I mean, the rights of man, Declaration of the Rights of Man of the Revolution, and uh, the the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. It's all about human dignity. Everything is based on this. And it, it goes, that's what they're basing the LGBT position on, uh, human dignity. And, and, and uh, abortion is a matter of also serving human dignity because it's a human right. Mm -hmm. um, so Francis is, again, uh, he is leading the charge now in these, in these, you know, making human dignity the essential factor deciding right and wrong for all mankind. Uh, it's not a matter of, uh, of God uh, or the rights of God. And by the way, I mean, you go back to Vatican II, you find the same thing. I'm sorry, um, I shouldn't apologize for this, but, uh, you know, those who, who, who want to uphold Vatican II have to realize it was a revolution. And uh, when they start that last document of the Council, Dignitati Sumane Persone, on uh, uh, religious liberty, you know, they talk about uh, everyone owes to God finding the true religion. That was meant to appease, that opening of that document was meant to appease uh, the conservative bishops who were opposing this, this, this new doctrine of religious liberty uh, based on the principles of the Gospels, they say. They found it in the Gospels that uh, human beings, because of human dignity, have the right to basically not only uh, embrace false religions, but even to propound false religions, teach them, and uh, bring men to error about God, teach error about God. They have a God-given right to do this, teach error about God. I mean, this has implications even about blasphemy, and uh, their very concept of God, that they think God could give a human right to teach error, to lie about him, <clears throat> to falsify the faith in God. Um, you, there, there are serious logical and theological consequences to all such statements of Vatican II and about Francis and by Francis himself. Mm -hmm. um, so people are just seemingly beginning to wake up about that. E even the conservative Noah Sordo uh, voices out there uh, are beginning to catch on that there's something very, very gravely wrong and they can't hide it anymore. Another aspect, by the way, <clears throat> that they're finally coming to grips with <clears throat> is the abuse. Is is the abuse uh, now the the, uh, the representative of the, of the of the abusers in the hierarchy is a cardinal Theodore McCarrick, who for years has been abusing young people, and uh, finally they can't they cannot smother this. They can't hide this anymore. And when uh, Cardinal World decides, well, we've got to appoint a a panel of bishops to investigate this. You have people saying, no way, no way. These bishops, we cannot trust them. We cannot trust them to investigate themselves. <clears throat> and, I mean, these are the conservative voices now in the Novus Ordo. <clears throat> They've lost all credibility, with, uh, even with their own people.
Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, I mean, again, I apologize, uh, I sh maybe I shouldn't, but I'm just saying that this is their objective. They want to destroy the credibility of what people regard as the Catholic Church. And sure, and Father, in regards to the relationship between, uh, between the modernists and the leftists, you know, th there's been talk now after Francis' pronouncement and how the Church has changed her position that the bishops of the United States will now add this, uh, this concept of abolishing the death penalty to, their, their lobby, to one of their lobbying mm -hmm. uh, platforms. And the other ones that they mentioned on there are, you know, uh, universal health care mm -hmm. uh, for the poor, the Im comprehensive immigration reform, mm -hmm. opposition to this uh, Muslim ban, and all these things. They're all so, you know, the U.S. bishops and all of their, their lobbying platform is all just this, this temporal silly natural mm -hmm. things nothing to do with religion and it's all perfectly in line with with, with the leftist program it's, it's even sad. the socialist program yeah you know this young uh, lady bartender who uh, mm -hmm. now is sort of leading leading the socialist charge in the united states mm -hmm. um well she's a member of a party and the party uh, social democrats actually have a platform it would be very instructive for people to read that platform because it talks about everything being subject to the democratic process. As a matter of fact, one, one socialist uh, candidate stood up before the people and said, we have to regulate every aspect of human life. <coughs> and uh, it's just, it, it's insanity for them. Uh, these young people now, I guess many of them are, are the younger, you know, mm -hmm. and, and crowd who know nothing about these things, saying that the solution is to have government control everything. To, to let the politicians control our, our lives. This is the objective. Father, since you, since you mentioned this that, I, think, uh, I have an article that goes perfectly in line with that. It's just from the AP, the Associated Press. It, uh, the title is, Christian Heartland Opens Window into Fight for China's Soul. And there's, mm -hmm. there's talk here of how, um, of just the, the terrible persecution that's happening to Christians in, mm -hmm. in China. And they talk here about how uh, the president now, he's a closet uh, Maoist. He's very anxious about thought control. He has, he's obsessed with this idea of even controlling people's the thoughts. President talk, of China. Yeah, you talk about uh, you know the government controlling everything. This is this is what it looks like. This is, this is what happens. It says here uh, just a, a few examples in here. They say that um, that uh, they have these house churches over there where perhaps 100, 200 different people will will go and have their worship services or, or whatever they may be. And they, they talk of how just the Chinese officials, the police officers, government officials, they'll, su they'll have these surprise raids where they'll come in with electric saws and they'll cut up everything in there. They'll rip down, they'll rip, rip apart their Bibles. They, they say they even take some of, the, uh, some of the worshipers there and they hold them in a, in a police station. Uh, they just, they well, these are the people that Francis is dealing with, yeah. now, by the yeah. way. It says they come in armed with electric saws, they demolish the church, they confiscate Bibles and computers, <coughs> they hold young worshippers, including a 14-year-old girl, at a police station <coughs> for more than 10 hours. They do all this stuff, <coughs> and it's all because uh, their government is obsessed with this idea of thought control, control and controlling control, every control, thought. Yeah. And, and, you know, it says in here, they'll come in, they'll raid these, sh these house churches, they'll rip down any crosses, anything that could reference God, and they replace them with pictures of, of, of the president. Oh, right, of, right. And it's, it's, this is what socialism well, well, is. That is what socialism is, right? That's what it does. Social, people want to draw a line between communism and socialism. But the, the people have to realize that communism is nothing but some ephemeral dream yeah. <laughs> that is supposed to result from having socialized the world. The first step is to, to have socialism take complete control of the entire world, the economies of the entire world. But the only way they can take, the socialists can take complete control of the economy is take complete control of the lives of the people of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to control pr production. You have to control the resources. And you have to control the population. So socialism is not just an economic uh, program or no. a theory. It, it involves absolute dominion over every single human being alive on the face of the planet <clears throat> because they are all part of a production and consumption process. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, we, you mentioned China, what's going on in China, and Francis is dealing with China. Uh, to uh, let, let them do this, allowing the, the Chinese communist bishops to take over there. 
Um, and also, uh, you know, we, we mentioned uh, just a moment ago Theodore McCarrick, the cardinal, who's now been found um, <sighs> as a... <laughs> I, I, I hesitate to say it because it is so sordid, and I don't want to scandalize. But it just the, an abuser of, of young men for years and years and years and years, and rising through the ranks to become a cardinal in the Novus Ordo Church, right? And a great fan of Francis, and uh, and and you have now priests and bishops who are talking about this mafia of homosexual um, prelates in their in their church who actually persecute and silence anyone who would expose them. And how, how much control they have, right, in the Novus Ordo uh, Church and religion. And we started out by talking about uh, Francis uh, on, the, on the death penalty, uh, overturning that position of the Church throughout the centuries. <clears throat> it sounds like we're all over the map here, but the point is, all of these things are now coalescing. They're all coming together, right? <clears throat> and the fountainhead of all of this goes right back to Francis and the Vatican, all of it. It's right there. And people are beginning to put this together and realize that Francis is really the, the, the spiritual <clears throat> the spiritual voice of this of this revolution, of uh, this leftist revolution that is meant to take over the world. Um, he is going to be the one who is spearheading this move toward the one world religion mm -hmm. <clears throat> of Gnostic environmentalism. Um, I, I hope people begin to understand what's happening here, but I hope they really do understand it and don't start thinking it undermines their faith. I want them to see in what's happening a confirmation of their faith. <clears throat> I've heard so many people say, well, it can't be this way. It just can't be this way because of Christ's promise. And if this is happening, <clears throat> then Christ's promise has failed and the church is over. And uh, People don't understand that. That's, that's not true. Based upon what the scriptures, sacred scriptures have told us, the prophecies made there, some by our Lord himself, based upon what the fathers of the church have said, based upon uh, approved apparitions of the church, Our Lady of Fatima and La Salette and Lord and all the rest, um, we, we know that these times are coming. We, we, they, they, people say this can't happen. They have to happen. If, if what our Lord has told us is true, and he himself has told us what to expect. The question is not whether, the question is only when these things will happen. And I would like people to not have their faith shaken by these things. I'd like them to realize that this is a fulfillment, not a contradiction of Christ's words. Sure. And, and to realize that uh, this should confirm their faith, because he, he has told us that, that these times would come. If, we, if this is what we're seeing happen before our very eyes, not only should we be surprised, we would, we would be surprised to find that they are not, they do not happen. That's a good point. Well, I hope so. Father, I've got another article here. This one's from LifeSite News. It's titled, Vatican Archbishop Critics of Pope Francis Are Not Faithful to Tradition. Mm. So this is uh, from Archbishop uh, Reno Crisciella. He's the president of the Pontifical Council for the New Evangelization. Fancy. He says, uh, there's no foothold for challenging the magisterium of Pope Francis in light of the previous magisterium. Uh, he says here, uh, one should never use the magisterium as an instrument to dispute the development of doctrine. When it is used as an instrument, then I fear there is no desire to discover the truth and that there is no fidelity to the tradition of the church. What do you think about that, Father? <coughs> it's absurd. Okay. I mean, it, it's just an absurd statement. Yep. You can't go on the magisterium of the church's teachings throughout the ages <coughs> and see and recognize the contradiction. That's being bad. That's somehow uh, contrary to the con concept of magisterium or whatever else. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a lengthy article. He says a lot more. What's this about fixism or something like that? We heard. Yeah. Something well, he ta he just talks about this, the whole idea of truth and doctrine and all this, and you know, he says silly things like we must reiterate we must reiterate how much continuity there is in the development of doctrine. He says though, uh, let's see, there's so many great ele elements of Pope Francis' pontificate. 
But he says, when we speak of truth, we have to keep in mind this dynamic concept. He says, okay. quote, truth is not a fixist dimension. Truth is not a fixist dimension. Yes, why? Now, that's, that's a, you know, that's a, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> this is typical modernism. Mm -hmm. Just to, to, just buzzwords, you know, yeah. fixist dimension, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> so there's no such thing as stable truth. Uh, there's no such thing as... A, f a fixed truth, yeah. or a dimension of truth. What, what, well, does, they get, does he spell that dementia or <laughs> dimension? <laughs> um, he, he's, they, they've got a definition of fixism here. It's the non-scientific theory that the species alive today are identical to those of the past, and that evolution does not happen. Okay. Well, you, you know, they always invoke evolution. You know. yeah. Yeah. They're evolutionists at heart. They believe that everything evolves. And, and truth evolves too, and this is again we're talking about the very, very heart of modernism here. Yep. The man's a modernist. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, who who was the, the head of the, the congregation for social affairs or something of the church who recently came out and said that China represents the the the, the best example yeah. of the social doctrine of the church yeah. put into practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> these people are dangerous. Yeah. Not only uh, is what they're saying uh, nonsense, it is insanity. And it is not only not true, it is the opposite of the truth. I mean, some, some lies are not true. But some lies are so bad, they are the exact contrary of the truth. Mm -hmm. And that is what you get from modernists. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> he, this, this is the definition of insanity. Uh, the you know, truth is not a fixed system mentioned. You can't you can't do anything with that. If there's no truth, then there's there's nothing. You can't argue with someone like this. You, there's nothing you can do if someone doesn't acknowledge the first basic principle that there's one truth. There's nothing. But you, you know, can do this with man, that. this man really represents Francis very well. Oh yeah. Because what does Francis say? Uh, he says that change is the tradition of the church. That's mm -hmm. what Francis says. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if change is the tradition, then Tradition comes down to just constant change. That's what he's saying. Yeah. The only tradition of the church is constant change. Mm -hmm. And he says we have to recognize the continuity mm -hmm. in that. And that's, that's yeah. his... <clears throat> well, he even uses the expression, how much, we must stress how, how much continuity there is in the development of doctrine. Yeah. How much continu continuity? <laughs> I mean, there's supposed to be perfect continuity, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... You know, I mean, sorry, Tom, but, you know, everything they say, every time they open their mouth, <clears throat> out comes the, 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 the latest modernist um, madness. Mm -hmm. And it, the saddest part is they actually seem to believe it. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to find that that archbishop who was the head of that uh, congregation or whatever it was, that council... council. <laughs> really believes that China, communist China, represents the perfect uh, implementation of Catholic social doctrine. And that the so-called Cardinal Marx believes that the Church owes her social doctrine to Karl Marx, the, you know, the, the, the author of communism. Well, he, wasn't, he didn't invent communism, but he was the, certainly a high watermark in the, level, in the development of communist thought. But he actually believes this. But this is madness. If they actually believe this, they're madness. And if they don't, they're liars. But they're leftists. And leftists are capable of the most insane beliefs. Because they have no... They have no... They don't believe in the existence of truth. Nope. There is no such thing as truth as the Catholic Church teaches it to be and as you and I know it to be. They don't even believe in truth. Father, I just have to read this last paragraph here for you. Frischiella also insisted that the Catholic Church cannot accept an idea of truth which is, quote, closed in on itself. The truth, by its very nature, refers to fidelity, but also to freedom. The truth shall make you free. A truth that opens up more and more is a truth that makes every believer, every man, discover a deeper freedom. This, however, also requires fidelity. The link between fidelity and truth is a typical link of the biblical conception of truth. The truth shall make you free? The truth shall make you okay, free. Okay, so this is the case of the devil can quote scripture mm -hmm, to right his purpose. Right? Yeah. 
Ja, fysikella. Okej, nu. Det är det vi delar med. Vi delar med the madness of modernism. Biblical conception of truth. Ja. Well. Um, well, this is interesting. Uh, the author here, right? Mm-hmm. Kwasniewski? Mm-hmm. Is that his name? Kwasniewski. He's, he's a writer, I believe, for, uh, for LifeSite News, mm-hmm. I think, right? Yeah, this Maybe is, others, too. This is from Life, LifeSite. I pulled this interesting article. what it says here. Kwasniewski, if, I mean, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, summed up Fisichella's comments saying, quote, the cumulative effect of Fisichella's Orwellian twists and turns <laughs> is that we can check out whatever is veritati splendor or humane vitae or familiaris consortio, etc., no longer seems to fit with the needs of modern Western people as seen by Pope Francis, is what, he's, what, mm. what the author says here. And uh, the expression he used, Orwellian twists and turns, you know, or- Orwell with his news- newspeak and so on, mm. you know, I, think he's, I think he's got them figured out pretty well. <laughs> The only question here is, <clears throat> what does this say about Francis's faith? Does he hold the Catholic faith? Does he even believe there is such a thing? Right? And he is, is he falsifying everything? Right? Um, the church, Christ, uh, the faith, the sacraments, the mass, everything. Well, this is what the modernists do. They falsify everything. Yeah. Father, in this uh, last article that I wanted to mention tonight, uh, you know, Pope Francis has a uh, an impending visit to Ireland soon, and the Prime mm. Minister there is saying that he'll push the Pope on accepting the same-sex families. A little quote here, he says that uh, our view, he's going to tell this to, to Pope Francis, our view as a society and as a government that families come in all sorts of different forms, and that includes families led by same-sex parents. What do you think will be Francis's response when he gets this? Uh, uh, I don't know how Francis will respond to that. I guess it depends on which way the political winds are blowing at the time. Um, Francis always manages to come up with some kind of a soundbite to try to quell the uh, the conservative conscience mm-hmm. and make people uh, give people enough to make them think. Well, really, all is well deep down. You know, it's not really what it appears to be. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what Francis will say. <clears throat> but um, it is entirely within the realm of possibility when this... Is it Veradkar? Is that his mm-hmm. name, Veradkar? Mm-hmm. So he's actually born of uh, p- parents who are, are, not, are not Irish, right? Yeah. He was born in Ireland. Yeah. His parents were born in India or India, someplace like that? India, I believe so. <clears throat> so, okay. So, um, <clears throat> by heritage, he, he's not Irish, really, right? Right. And uh, by morality, he's not, not Catholic, certainly. No. Um, but they elect him, or did they, you know, in Ireland, who knows. But he is the prime minister, is that right? Right. And um, so uh, he is going to confront Francis now on the question of, well, that would be the next logical step yeah. for the LGBT right. uh, crowd to, uh, <coughs> to uh, you know, put Francis... Uh, put it to Francis about this yeah. change, you know. Because yeah. they're, they're going to hammer this through. Yeah. Um, they really are, I mean, the LGBT crowd really are the brown shirts uh, of, of Hitler. <coughs> they, they are the shock troops, really, of the, the New World Order right now. Yeah. <coughs> and they are determined to follow through on the leftist uh, program of gaining control of the origins of all human life. As I mentioned, the socialists need to control every human life to gain control over the economy. Um, you know, even the word economy comes from the Greek word basically for you know, the household. And so they, they need to, to uh, redefine family, redef- redefine human life itself. They need to re- redefine, redefine God, faith, religion, and uh, the the spearhead of that right now is the uh, just the viciousness and maliciousness of the LGBT crowd, which is determined, uh, uh, like the Antifa crowd, right, to uh, to just bully their way 
mm-hmm. into, into prominence and just bulldoze anybody who dares stand in their way. Sure. Um, they are being aided and abetted by the politicians. And, um, you know, that's, we're reaping the, the, the harvest of our immorality. Our lady, our lady told us that this would be, uh, she didn't spell it all out for us, but she certainly made it clear enough that this is the result of our sin. And um, it is amazing to me <clears throat> that God is still tolerating all of this. And uh, I can't help but think it's because there are those good souls in the world who are doing as our Lord told them to do. If you wish to be my disciple, you must take up your cross every day and follow me. There must be good souls in the world who are offering our Lord prayers and sacrifices of repentance and, and uh, reparation for God to be able. Even Our Lady said that she was, uh, it was hard for her to hold back the hand of our Lord and his justice, just poised to strike the world. And that was a hundred years ago. Right. <clears throat> so there must be good souls in the world, and I can't help but think that uh, the traditional Catholic people are those who are certainly uh, prominent in that. Sure. So we just have to keep getting, uh, talking to people who, who have faith, the true faith out there, but who are lost in the desert of the world right now to come back to the traditional faith, come back to Calvary, come back to the traditional Mass and the sacraments. And uh, not to be disheartened by what they see. As I say, when I, when I sat across the, uh, the table from the young law student um, who said, if I thought there was anything wrong you know, with Vatican II or John Paul II, I think I'd lose my faith. I, I don't want people to rela- react like that because it's clear that he didn't understand. He doesn't understand the faith. He doesn't understand the church. <clears throat> uh, he doesn't understand the magisterium of the church. And, uh, you know, this is a problem we find with people who are now part of the Novus Ordo. Uh, they're, they're getting a false understanding of the church itself. Their so-called ecclesiology is, is falsified by the modernists. They're being led astray <clears throat> so that if they see the modernists uh, having control and doing what they're doing in the church, their conclusion is, therefore, Christ has failed, this is what we're saying, that the church has failed. It's not that at all. It's quite the opposite. I can't stress that enough because I don't want people being so disheartened by the, what the modernists are doing and the leftists are doing to, to make, draw the wrong conclusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> this is precisely the problem that people have when they think they're going to practice the traditional faith within the Novus Ordo. And you face them with the question, how can you do that? Well, they say, well, it's the church, isn't it? It's the church. You say the Novus Ordo represents the Catholic Church? And, you, you know, you can even ask them, well, would you practice the Novus Ordo religion? Oh, no, no. Is that Catholicism? No, no, that's not the Catholic religion. <clears throat> so how can that be the Catholic Church, which is practicing the Novus Ordo and enforcing that and pushing, forcing it upon you? How can it be the Catholic Church that is doing that if that is not the Catholic religion? You're allowed to, to uh, you know, you see that clearly so that you will not practice it. But you're thinking it's the Catholic Church that is that is behind that religion and is demanding you practice it? And, and if it's not, then how can you say, I'm going to practice the traditional Catholic religion within the Novus Ordo? <clears throat> how many different faiths and different religions can you have in one church and have it be the church that Christ established? <clears throat> and the answer is obvious. You know, there's only one true faith that Christ established, one true Catholic religion, one true church that he established. And he cannot have two mutually opposed faiths and two mutually opposed religions, two mutually opposed faiths, Catholicism and modernism, and two mutually opposed religions, the true traditional Catholic religion and the Novus Ordo. You just can't have them in the same church. Uh, People have to face that fact for what it really is. But the fact that there is a, a modernist invasion of the church and a hijacking of Catholic institutions and their hell-bent attempt to foist their modernism as the tr- their, their false faith on, the faith on the Catholic people, as though it were Catholicism, and their false religion, the Novus Ordo on Catholics, 
This is a confirmation of Christ's promises of uh, the tribulation to come and the great apostasy and, and the, all the rest, you know. Um, so, uh, again, I, I can't stress uh, more s strongly to people, don't let your faith be shaken by these things. Your faith should be confirmed by these, by these events. Sure. And you should see all the more clearly the need <clears throat> to hold fast to the true Catholic faith, the traditional Catholic faith, in belief and in practice. I think that's a good point to end on, Father. Any, anything well, else you'd like to mention before we go? <clears throat> Just um, go back and read Second Thessalonians chapter 2. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mainstay, and, and read that chapter all the way through, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and come to the end and see where St. Paul says that um, when the church has is, is reached the height of its the persecution at the, you know, under the command of the Antichrist, who will no doubt be a, one of the most. He'll be the he'll be the son of perdition. He'll 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 embody sin in his life. He, uh, all of these perversions will be the hallmark of his existence. All of these perversions. That when you see this happening. What does St. Paul say? Hold fast to the traditions that you've received. Love the truth. I mean, this is what he says. This is, we're going to immunize you against the deceits of the greatest deceiver of all history, the Antichrist. So what better advice could one give today, in the world today? <clears throat> Love the truth <clears throat> and hold fast to the Catholic traditions. Father, thanks for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. well, you're welcome, Tom. Thank you. No problem. Thanks to all of our viewers as well for watching this episode of What Catholics Believe. Until next time, we ask that you all remember the words of Our Lady of Fatima to consecrate yourselves and your families to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and to pray and do penance. Thank you and God bless you.